In the 80s and 90s, Mike Tyson ruled the heavyweight division. He used Custom Auto's peekaboo style of boxing to destroy every opponent in his path. Last time, we looked at some unique drills that Tyson practiced with trainer Kevin Rooney. These drills helped to set up some of Tyson's most spectacular knockouts. This time, we're going to cover the remaining drills and fill in the missing pieces of Tyson's style. This breakdown will get a bit more advanced as we delve into how these techniques work together. The simple elements creating a complex and unique system of fighting that permanently changed the sport of boxing. Last time, we looked at how Tyson practiced rapidly shifting forward in a squared up stance while dodging an insane amount of punches, slipping for straights, and weaving for hooks. This helped Tyson to quickly and safely close the distance. Now let's take a look at the offensive version of this drill. It's essentially the same footwork as the slipping drill, but Tyson is now throwing a rapid fire punch with each step. One of the main principles of D'Amato's system was for the practitioner to get close enough to negate the reach of taller opponents. Peekaboo fighters use superior speed to flurry, beating their competitors to the punch with short, tight hooks and uppercuts. This killed the lengthier fighter's jab and cross, their go-to weapons. These close-range flurries were also a specialty of D'Amato's first champion, Floyd Patterson. Patterson's speed was legendary, and it's an ongoing debate whether he or Muhammad Ali had the fastest hands at heavyweight. Tyson was by no means as fast as Patterson, but he could regularly beat his opponent to the punch by taking a tighter angle. To pull this off, Tyson's hooks needed to be so tight they were nearly elbows. And while Tyson may not have had Patterson's speed, he most certainly possessed far greater power. To create openings for these close range punches, Tyson's hips and shoulders had to be squared up with his opponents. To get there, he used some of the drills covered in the last video. Of course, Tyson's competitors usually did their best to keep their stance narrow and stay safely sideways, pivoting out to regain their defensive position. But obviously, this rarely worked. That's because Tyson's footwork was primarily geared towards crowding his opponents and then cutting off their escape. One way that Tyson did this was to purposefully practice sidestepping so deep inside that he temporarily changed into a southpaw position, with his right leg closer to his opponent than his left. Rooney drilled this concept with Tyson repeatedly in several different scenarios, and it's one of the keys of Tyson's success at pressuring his opponents. This was often predicated off of a lead hook. As his opponent tried to pivot out of the way, the lead hook would change mid-air into a rear hook, and Tyson was in an ideal position to follow up from southpaw. Here's a great example from Tyson's early career. Tyson enters inside with a 2-3, and his opponent tries to pivot out to stay safe. The textbook response would be for Tyson to step forward to regain his stance, but Tyson instead turn shifts into southpaw to follow his competitor. His deep inside position has placed his right foot on the outside of his opponents, cutting him off and aligning his rear hand. He puts his opponent down with two vicious hooks. This exact same scenario repeats a short while later, ending the fight. And here are a few more examples of Tyson transitioning into southpaw from a deep inside position. The placement of Tyson's rear foot on the outside of his opponent's left is key to cutting off his escape and aligning his shots. The next drill is a great example of how Tyson put his combinations together so that each punch set up the next and this one was demonstrated by Customato himself. As mentioned last time, Tyson would double up on attacks with the same hand, attacking the body so that the opponent would adjust his guard and expose his head. Tyson's hook-uppercut combination was a variation of this that resulted in multiple KOs and knockdowns. Here are just a few.
But what truly made this tactic effective was how it was used in tandem with D'Amato's angled footwork. Having already stepped inside and squared up his hips with his opponents, Tyson would step in even deeper, D'Amato shifting and changing both himself and his opponent into a southpaw position, with each now having their right legs forward. Here's a great example of a beautiful knockout that's almost move for move the sequence Tyson drilled in the previous clip. This technique is startling to opponents used to fighting with only one stance, and resulted in multiple KOs for Tyson. The beauty of these drills is that they all build on each other, blending together to fully utilize one of the most unique combat systems ever created. Tyson used Amato's system to seamlessly close the distance, square up his hips to his opponents, brutalize them on the inside, and catch them with powerful attacks as they tried to retreat. It's a phenomenal example of creating complexity through simple principles. If you would like to learn more about Tyson's footwork, you can check out my book, Footwork Wins Fights, or check out Power of the Pros to learn more about generating power in your own strikes. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.